guys are doing well. I want to show you guys how to get your audio from the plugin FL Studio whilst integrating it into Studio One, how to get audio into Studio One. Um, this is the way I do it anyway. I feel like it's the most proficient way and it helps me get my job done quicker. So again, everyone's probably knowing what's happening right now with the world, uh, the whole craziness with uh, the COVID-19. Um, if you're feeling stuck or you, you're trying to figure out whatever, just, just use this time to be a better version of yourself, to improve yourself in whatever way that is. Um, but anyway, let's get straight into this tutorial and let's go through this right now. So as you can see on the screen here, I've got FL Studio as a plugin here. This is the VSTI version. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, I'll just quickly show you. So you've got your plugins section here and that under the instruments, you get the VSTI, you drag and drop that straight to your... Uh, pretty much just drag and drop it like that and that, that will create the VSTi. Uh, if you've created something already in FL Studio, which is what I've done here, I'll just slide that up and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got FL Studio loaded up here. You hit the little Apple uh, icon there and that will load up your project inside of FL. So now you can see the drum rack inside of uh, FL Studio. I've got all the sounds here. I'm gonna just actually mute them because, uh, actually I'll, I'll keep one of them because I need one of the sounds to show you what I'm gonna do. Uh, but basically the way it works is it plays using it like a VST basically. So you create a new recording track. Uh, make sure it's stereo because that's what you want to record in. You can always change it to mono later on if you needed to. And uh, change your input here if you want. So you can go to instruments and hit FL. Uh, if you don't want to do it here, you can do it later on. There's no big issue if you miss that step, but um, that's just the way it works. And then hit OK. So it will create a track here. At tells you then that the instrument input is FL Studio, as you can see there. I've already got one here, but we'll just uh, hide that for the minute. Actually, I'll just remove that because there's no point keeping it. Um, and then what you have to do from this point forward is just arm the track like you're going to record if you're recording external vocals or, or whatever it is. Make sure that's armed and then listen to the track as well. Uh, this little thing here is showing that it's in stereo, so it's a channel, the channel mode is stereo. And now if I hit play, uh, if I just solo these two, you should hear some audio. Uh-oh. <laughs> what have I done wrong here? Oh, here we go. Unmute. <laughs> All right. So that's now playing me audio. It's coming through both the channels. You can see that, but it's, it's monitoring through this channel here. So what I would do normally to save uh, any issues with the audio recording, always do two full bars of audio. So say, for example, you got a four bar length, do two of those so that would be eight bars uh, and then make sure it records the second set of bars. So from say from one to five, you press record, it records that. You'll see in a second anyway, but make sure you record that first part because for whatever reason, the timing inside of Studio One, it links it on the, the next section of bars. So I'll show you what I'm talking about if I hit record right now. Right, so the timing is just a little bit off and I'll show you why that, what I mean by that is you can see this tiny bit of time here. There's a bit of a difference in the delay or something like that, but for whatever reason, it ends up catching up when it gets to this next set of bars. So just always start with the first and then make sure you record another section just to make sure the timing is right. Cause now you can see there's no actual delay there. I'll just cut that right at the, the point there. And then I can do the same here at the end of the, the bar there and then I'll just loop this so it plays audio back. So it's recorded it now. I don't need to worry about the VST anymore. I can just play it straight in Studio One. And just disable that record arm. So that's it. And then also just remember, make sure you put some crossfades or create an auto fade on there. Uh, just make sure there's no clicks and pops because that also prevents any sort of crappiness in the audio. So just so you know. So now there's no clicking or popping. You heard it before, now you don't. Uh, that's pretty much what I would normally do to record the track inside of uh, Studio One. Just allows you to get everything done. Um, you can also do, the, the kind of cool thing is if you're just wanting to um, record stuff like that, you can sort of manipulate the sound if you wanted to in real time. Uh, and then it's like recording, you know, if you're recording a band, if they're playing, then you're doing everything in real time. So if you had the instrument open, uh, this is coming out of arcade, but whatever it is that you're playing with, uh, if you're manipulating the sound, you can do that in real time and record it in real time. 
So then you can create variations to the sound if you wanted to or whatever. It just allows you a bit, a bit more, I guess, uh, manipulation as far as what you want to do with the sound there. Uh, but that's just pretty much the way I do it. And then you can see here, I'll just delete this track because I don't need it. Uh, but you can you can hear here, I should say, because it's more what you're doing, uh, the full end kind of product. <laughs> So that's pretty much where I started with this beat. I've got a few different samples working on the drums and I'll show you guys how I did that in another video coming up shortly, but I just wanted to show you how I record the audio into, into Studio One and give you kind of an explanation on how that works. Um, if there's any questions, hit me up in the comments, but if you're recording your audio from FL into Studio One as a plugin, uh, that is the way I would do it. If not, if there's other ways, you can bounce it out of FL as a project and then import it into Studio One, but I prefer to do this in real time and just work with it that way and then just get my own kind of creative action happening. Anyway, catch you on the next one. Peace out.